Well, let us now go. Oh, that's adorable. That is so cute. That is so. I am. <laughs> Dr. Ethan. <laughs> Dr. Ethan and Philip Hershenfeld. Doctors. Joined. Two doctors. 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 I'm sorry. Doctors. Uh, oh, and you didn't add. This is Dr. Hershenfeld. You know what annoys me about your son? Tell me. He didn't put an apostrophe on doctors. That's actually Everybody. the Oxford apostrophe, <laughs> and I abjure that. Uh, at no, Harvard, I would, we don't I, use apostrophes. I was I was impressed that you didn't add an unnecessary apostrophe. Dr. Philip Hershenfeld is a Freudian psychoanalyst. He is joined by the world-renowned expert, Ethan Hershenfeld, who is an expert in everything. There's nothing... Including, that's including um, apostrophes. Do you know what it's called when you use too much of them? What? It's called uh, it's called apostrophe profligacy. <laughs> <laughs> you can sprain your tongue trying to say that. So your your message is that people should be more possessive of their apostrophes exactly. and not use them. Don't waste apostrophes. Conserve. By the way, parenthetically. <laughs> in, uh, in, in England, in England, the quotation mark is the apostrophe and vice versa. It's it's very confusing. If you ever tried to read English literature in actual English, it's it's very confusing. If why is color, speak, one of the one of the questions I've always wanted answered is why do the British spell color with a U? Because uh, if you're English, only you have color. <laughs> That's a oh, thing. Well, the, yes, it does. Uh, the, the, we have a little mystery here. Uh, usually, Dr. Hershenfeld is in Manhattan, and Ethan, Dr. Ethan, is the. But you're together. And it yeah, works. You know why we are together? It's to save you money. <laughs> regular show. We each have a, yeah, we get a hairstylist, yeah. a lighting guy, a, a photography guy, a set designer, and that adds up. Send you. Now we just cut it in half. One yeah. of those people. I appreciate that. I'm going to guess by the you guys look really relaxed, really happy. Yeah. And it's August. I'm going to guess. You're in, are you in Cape Cod? Where else? Yes. Yeah. Where the Jews go to Hampton. <laughs> <laughs> Are you in Truro? Yes. Yeah. That was the original uh, license plate for Truro, Massachusetts, where the Jews go to Hampton. That was back when Hampton was a verb and when it when the Hamptons were restricted. Uh, but how did you happened. guys hold up with Henri? Henri didn't visit these climbs. He just just was not interested. It's restricted. Restricted. Yeah. So you, you got out of it. It was OK. Truro, they, they have nude beaches. Do they still have nude beaches? Oh, that was that was in the 70s. That was back in the day where this guy used to go and watch the boys and girls play volleyball. <laughs> this is what's called a screen memory. Do you know what that is? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. A screen memory is where. You confabulate a memory, which has more of the qualities of a dream or a fantasy, but you impute it to a memory. And then you, in this case, you also, it's a screen memory plus projection. You're yes. putting that whole is, thing onto it me. It is a projection because I would go there to watch the boys. <laughs> <laughs> Are there people who have too much body acceptance when you saw some of those people? Yeah. Not, uh, not in my book, no. You've never suggested a case of body dysmorphia to anybody. What's bad, what I don't like is that a lot of the people who do have a little bit too much body acceptance are also interested in the sport of hacky sack. <laughs> and that's a terrible combination. You should not combine the two. That's not <laughs> Ask your doctor if body dysmorphia is right for you. There are certain people who... Uh, true. Is that an act of aggression, do you think? Sometimes when you that see certain, it is. But everything is an act of aggression. So that, that's an easy one. OK, so let me ask you what it's like to take a vacation in August. And does your mind get to a place where you say, 
why can't I do this 52 weeks out of the year? Can, I would assume you're not working. I am mostly not working. I'm doing a little paperwork. And, and right like now that. he considers this work. This is. <laughs> Could you completely stop? Could you just enjoy the beach? I've been thinking that this time. I don't think I ever seriously considered it before. He comes from my home. show. He comes from a long line of workaholics, like his father, true, who worked true. seven days a week until he he was into well into his eighties. Um, I did not get that gene. Um, I've, I mean, I'm, as I've said, I'm uh, I'm involuntarily unemployed at the moment, um, but. Um, but I have a capacity. I like napping, as I've said. Um, I don't check in with the office frequently because I don't have an office. Um, and uh, I don't find that to be a problem. <laughs> Work all, uh, there was a piece in the Times today that said many people are contemplating not going back to work because it's so onerous. And I was thinking of writing a piece, an answer to that, namely, but they found the wrong kind of work. Well, but yeah. that that's that's a very bourgeois conception is. because you have the you have the, I, the, the, I, the I you're have blessed the, to be able yes. to have a job that you that you that right. you love and that you can do. And I'm getting in the car right now. I'm driving up. <laughs> this, I could just see the three of us right. arguing over it. <laughs> this would be so. What you're saying that it, the bourgeois who are sat somewhat satisfied or convinced that they're satisfied think that you can find a job that's fulfilling. I, I actually, I go ahead, go ahead, okay. go ahead, David. You go. No, I was going to say I, I find my job very fulfilling, but it's a job where you have to be hustling to get the to keep to getting the job. It's a freelance life, which is a whole other set of issues. Um, speaking, well, of have you ever had a patient? I'm asking this of Ethan. Yes. Has your father ever had a patient who never had a problem with work? Who just said, you know what? I have a job and I love it, and they appreciate me, and I'm paid as much as I yes. deserve. Yes. Those patients are, there are plenty of those patients. Uh, they litter the offices of his colleagues on the Upper East Side. But those ones who are so satisfied with their work, they have terrible marriages. So they're in there complaining about the marriages and vice versa. The ones who like their marriages hate their work. And right. then there are the people, they're, 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 uh, they're the bonus patients who hate everything. Right. My no, rabbi. Is that correct? Yeah, my rabbi said to me, this is true. My rabbi said, uh, uh, and he was a horrible rabbi. And he said to me, when my kids what, was his, small, what was his ranking? <laughs> Lieutenant. Okay. He said to me, David, you can either be a great comedian or a great father. You can't be both. And I said, Rabbi, you must be a great parent. <laughs> That's good. And I meant it. I didn't like the guy. Uh, yeah, so workaholism is, is for me. Obviously, I can't do anything. Ralphie Lane Belton. Oh, it's, this is my son calling. Good for him. Thanks, Dad. Put him on. Put him on. Put him on. I haven't talked to you in a while, but I'm in the middle of my show. Don't say anything disgusting. Do not say anything disgusting. I am. Do not embarrass me. <laughs> Okay, so I shouldn't tell you what I just ate. <laughs> Goodbye. I'll call you later. I love you. <laughs> Wait, you don't want to know? I can't. I, I, I know nothing disgusting. I, I don't. You don't want to hear what I just ate? It was a burrito. Talk. I'm telling you. I'm sure it was I, a burrito. I, I can't talk to you. I love you. I'll call you after the show. Okay. Whatever. Okay. Whatever you're thinking, I ate. Yeah. It is. It's that. Okay. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> Bye. My, that's my son. I haven't spoken to. He was in uh, Greece, <laughs> and. Uh, the, uh, like a uh, summer stock musical? Yeah. <laughs> yeah was he Kanicki? <laughs> I was he Kanicki. Was Rizzo. <laughs> I'm dancing here. He, they combined it with Midnight Cowboy. So I haven't. if you told me that I could go three weeks without talking to my son, yeah. I'd go, you're out of your mind. And he went off with his girlfriend to Greece. And, you know, I got a couple of emails and you know should we show david the sunset no no because no, no? it's okay. a radio show fine yeah. yeah but you can describe it 
in the prose. The sun is setting in the sunset. Use the word dappled. That's what Vince Scully always talked. When he described the weather, he would talk about the dappled. Is he a golf, a golf guy? Vin, you don't know who Vince Scully is? The golf announcer or, the, or football? Even I know who Vince Scully is, who is still oh. alive. Huh. Dr. Hershenfeld, you grew up listening to Vince Scully because you were nice. Did he announce the Yankees games? The Dodgers, the Brooklyn Dodgers. OK. Did, did you listen to Vince Scully as a kid? I hated the Dodgers. Because of Jackie Robinson. But, you know, sometimes you have to <laughs> things change. Things change. Um, it's a joke. It's a joke. Got it. No, no, we got it. We got it. So, um, David, um, you know that my grandfather, I don't brag. He uh, he was a pioneer in baseball. He integrated the old Negro leagues. He was the first Jewish he, shortstop. And, and <laughs> he, he was the first white guy in the Negro leagues. And it was horrible. They used to make him sit at the front of the bus. Yeah, it was terrible. OK. Um, that, I want to is, that, that's, that is on the cusp of cancel, but not quite. Not quite. It needs some work. But, it needs um, some work, but I think they can't cancel me for that. Let me just, I just wanted to check in. How are you doing, David? I am, uh, <laughs> after that joke. <laughs> uh, the, you know, when I was in San Francisco, I met some British men who worked for DDB Needham, which was an advertising agency. Oh. And they were really smart. And I worked, I did a project with them. And they hated being in advertising because they were really smart British guys. And they said, the secret to advertising is you got to get in to get out. In other words, just when you hate your job, get so deep into it that you can enjoy it. That's and the that, same as that concept of the, the only way out is through. Psychologically, right. like if you're suffering through something, you got to. Yeah, just get so into the minutia of this horrible job and you'll find something about it that's fascinating that will get you through it. I don't know why I brought that up, because I actually like doing I, I love doing the podcast. There's work that I have to do uh, to make a living that. Oh, yeah, you had that partner. You had that writing partner who was being a real pain in the ass. Yeah. On that. Maybe yeah. move the. He has Listen, restless leg. He has we, restless are leg. Are we talking about this because Labor Day is next week? Do you think that has anything to do with why we're talking about jobs? And people are saying to me we shouldn't tape the show on Labor Day. Interesting. Well, do you, so what, 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 yeah. what is what is workaholism? Is it a lack of faith in God that God won't provide? It, like like any symptom, it could be anything. It could be severe anxiety. He's, he's been hi, you've been hiding behind that kind of answer for for a long time. It's just it because could it's be, the truth. It could be anything, but it's it, not just one thing. But it could pretend be. it's one thing just to be entertaining. Make, make <laughs> sort of. Make some sort of pronouncement. <laughs> Otherwise, it just all sounds like Wonder Bread. Just say something. <laughs> take, take a stand. I mean, Jesus. You can be wrong. Okay. okay. It's masochism yeah. in order to torture the people around you. How's that? Yeah, that's workaholism. It's also an extreme fear of the inner life. Because when you're at work, that's the one time where you can really just put all of your focus on the outside. Mm. And ignore everything that's going on in here. I'm touching my chest. I know it's radio. In here, I'm touching my forehead. In here, in, in easy, in, Mr. Tubin. Easy, Mr. <laughs> Tubin. Stop right there. <laughs> um, but the, so let's say you're fishing. Isn't aren't you escaping the inner life when you're fishing, or if you're painting, when you're doing something that people consider relaxing? I'm even glad you I brought up fish because I was reading. I was reading recently that in Korea, in certain dishes like in kimchi, the f fish is actually considered a spice. But if you consult the fish, the fish do not consider themselves a spice. <laughs> <laughs> 
they think of themselves as a sentient being. So I wanted to point that out. <laughs> I'm re I'm relaxed working. I find it relaxing yeah. to, to to work. And and like two nights ago, I was foggy headed and somebody called and we were writing jokes and I was laughing and I I, I felt alive. I felt, oh, this is fun. This is, we're writing jokes. It, it wasn't the, just the, the work, but it was you were doing it with another person. Right. It tends to enliven at least certain kinds of people like you and like me. It, there's something you get a charge out of connecting with somebody else not everybody feels that way certain jobs are actually they're, they're made more difficult by doing them with someone else like juggling <laughs> it becomes if you're a circus artist working on the street it's much easier to juggle on your own once you have to then involve <laughs> two more hands three more pins it's much harder is there any way two people can work together and not end up hating each other. Yes, that couple who created that vaccine in uh, in right. Europe, they yeah. created, they solved COVID together, and they, and they're a married couple. The only they're, other, they're, people, by the way, and Muslims, they're also Mo German Muslims. Yes, and they're right. Reformed Jews. Just to sh shout out, to, 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 to shout out, very Reformed. To, to quote, to quote Woody Allen, very Reformed right. Muslim. Right. <laughs> The only other people I know who've been able to work successfully together and remain in couples, I have two couple friends. So that's four friends in total who are architects, two couples, two men, a, a man and a woman, they're a couple, they have an architecture firm. So does the other one. I have a theory about this. Why are architects able to stay together while, while with all of the challenges of having a family and being in a couple and still be able to practice their work Good together? Question. Why is that? I know the answer. This is a quiz. As I they're good you, at building. We, he knows good at building. He really does. Yeah. Why? Why would architects be good? I, at I figured it out. It's because with couples, a lot of the stress that comes and a lot of what makes it very hard to be in a relationship is you're constantly thinking: if we get divorced, who gets the house? <laughs> <laughs> this is the one job where you don't have to worry about that. You can just put up another house. Right. So, and and architects are about stress. It's spreading the right. stress out evenly throughout the beams. Absolutely. You know? So they're they probably have a stress free. If 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 your marriage collapses and you're an architect, who's going to hire you? I, I don't want an architect who designs that way. The house symbolizes the marriage. Right. Yeah. Now, do if I buy something and it makes me happy, like a new stove, I need a new stove. Mm -hmm. I haven't had a stove since the pilot light went out. My pilot light, the stove is fine. Mm -hmm. I have a, in this apartment, there's a 40 year old stove, but I have to get rid of it because the mice were living in it. And I just, I thought, you know what? get a new stove Good thing. I ordered I ordered the stove and it has a, it's self cleaning is a self cleaning oven and I'm going this is gonna make me happy and then I feel guilty that I'm gonna own something that brings me joy that's, you should that's called neurosis really really Yes, indeed. Well, no, I would say what you're you're by the way, I could own a human being like, you know, like a, in a relationship and that would bring me joy. I would be so I don't I, and I don't feel guilty about like owning a human being. Just owning things makes me feel, no, I'm joking. I was gonna say, you could feel guilty about the oven uh, having to clean itself. That doesn't sound fair. I yeah, I go, I'll do it. <laughs> Take it easy. I got it. You're not going to do it right. You, you know, also, I think that that's a whole scam because I have a I have an oven in my apartment. It's been there for 25 years and it's not self-cleaning. 
So it doesn't clean itself and I don't clean it. Nobody cleans it. And it's You're totally right. fine. Who has to, you don't have to clean an oven. It's 400 degrees in there on a regular basis. <laughs> you to, what are they talking about? What are you? Maybe, maybe that's because. <laughs> what are you, what are you, You're destroying an entire industry as you talk. <laughs> You're putting people out of work. Who are these people getting in their ovens? I guess it's if you're always cooking like roasts and turkeys and things. That's when you get all that grease. That's the thing. If you're, it's yeah, it's the vegetarian thing. It's cleaner, I guess. Well, what is it? What is a self clean? Does it does it heat it at a special temperature or very 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 hot? He's making that up. I can tell because of the three varies. <laughs> <laughs> that was clearly made up. Yeah. What what possessions make you happy? If it, where you you can literally point to something you own, and you say this is my, my computer makes me happy. Uh, the my Adobe software makes me. I go, you know, this is this is making me happy. It's it's saving me time. It's efficient. It's a miracle. Some of the products that Adobe makes. My Hoka sneakers make me happy. And I, you know, those, they have very thick soles. They're very nice. The Hoka. most cushioned sneaker on the planet. Wow. Yeah, that's like the World Series, which is only uh, among American teams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, you don't, from, they're from Norway or some godforsaken place. Yeah, but you don't, you've <laughs> never worn a South African sneaker or like a, a sneaker. You don't know that. I know. <laughs> I know it. Because of Hoka sneakers, even with my bad knee and my bad back and my bad entire skeleton, I can jog because they're so cushioned. Wow. Uh, my, the possessions that I love, I love the way your son disrespects you. Because he does it in a way. With great respect. With great respect. <laughs> But my the possessions that give me pleasure, I have a real nostalgic uh, gene because there are some old ratty things like at the house here. There's a one of those, you know, those kind of watering guns you put at the end of a hose to water the mm -hmm. garden. This one is so old that the plastic fell off of it. It's only the metal from underneath it. It doesn't quite work. You have to pull on it when you used to be able to pull the trigger. And it gives me great pleasure. I, something I get pleasure out of these things that are still working after after thirty years. I don't know. I also like an old an old an old piece of like glassware, just something that was a, an, a uh, just an item you would find in any kitchen in the '60s. It's this sort of yeah. um, Corningware kind of glass, like this milky white glass. Mm -hmm. And it, there's only one of them left. There's no match, matching set. I just like those old things. I, mean, I guess I'm just a hoarder is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> dog, I like old dogs and old cats in New York City. Old dog. He's got a beautiful old dog. Yeah, our uh, beloved uh, Loki, he just turned 14 on Monday. So that was, that was exciting. 98 in human years. That's a lot of, yeah. But, but now that's not really true because different dogs live that's my, uh, yeah, the I factor. The, the, that's correct. It's different, but uh, but I was looking up because uh, I was feeling pre sadness about his you know eventual demise, and I was looking up the average. You know, you look on Wikipedia the average age of a shepherd mix, average lifespan, and it's like you know eleven or twelve. So he's he's in double OT is what I'm saying. Mm. Yeah, he's yeah. already, but he's doing old, well. Old English sheepdogs. What about him? the minute you get them, the clock is ticking, right? Yeah. Any huge dog. The huger the dog, the yeah, shorter yeah. the lifespan. In general. And, and you get like how many good years do you get out of say like a like a Rottweiler or a Doberman Pinscher? What how many and years? You get a good ten, ten nine. Really? Ten, ten, before the old age kicks in, I believe, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Speaking of Afghanistan, did you ever see the the canine corps? Ever see the the dogs who would jump with, with the soldiers who would parachute with them? Oh, yeah. Did you ever see Pekingese, right? Huh? Pekingese dogs, right? 
I, I don't think so. I was kidding. Those are like little, little tiny. Oh, no, these are big dogs who yeah, would yeah. land. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, I want to give a, a little shout out to a, um, it's more of a, it's not, it's a plug, but it's not for something I did. It's, it's friend, a friend made a film. Uh, it's called see you yesterday. It came out in 2019. It's absolutely amazing. And, um, so it's a time travel film about some kids in Brooklyn who on their summer break, they build a time machine and then it gets involved in like police brutality. The, the, the story is, is really great. Um, and that, I just want to say that a friend of mine produced it and it's great. All right, I'm going to ask your father see you yesterday. See you yesterday. I'm going to ask your father a question then see if you can answer it. Uh, do you have a pad and pencil, Dr. Hershenfeld? No, I don't. No, I don't. <clears throat> okay. It's the honor system. Okay. If you could go back in time, yes, and don't answer it. What? What? Where would you go if you could go back in time for twenty four hours? You mean when would you go? <laughs> oh, I mean when would you go? Yeah. Well, that's not, where would you go? When would you? Yeah. Oh no, I think what? Whence? Whence? <laughs> Whither? No, whither? Whither would you go? Whither would you go? Whither, whither would, would you go? You go? Is an whither inspirational poem I'm going to be writing for toddlers. <laughs> whither would you go? Well, I'm going to ask two questions uh, because I always imagine the three of us on a on a trip. So, uh, where would you go by yourself? When would you go? Okay. When would you go with Ethan? And when would you go with the three of us? Can you, do you have it figured out? Time travel. Wow. Um, I, don't, I, don't answer. I, don't answer yet. Oh, oh okay. you want me to say where he you would You have to go. guess where your, when your father would go. I know where he would like to go. He would like to go to fin de siècle Vienna. And all of that is right. And all that Freudian. But at the end of the 20, it was the end of the 20th century. Is not the not yeah. Um, is that true? So you'd like to go by yourself, 1899. 1895. Not just cafe. Freud, yeah. but Freud and Stefan Mahler Zweig. and Einstein. Yeah. And I mean, they had some amazing people. And the coffee, and very the good coffee. coffee. Coffee, the schlag was excellent. Yeah. I would like to go then also. Well, hang on, well, let's think about this. Do yeah. you think... Do you think you could go? So you would have to feign in the movie. You'd have to feign neuroses to see Freud. Or he could feign like being a student or whatever. Or no, you don't have to feign neurosis. We all got neurosis. You kidding? So you would go in and see Freud and he would feign take you as a patient. Why does feign mean fake and gladly how about Explain. Shin i'm sorry how about shin fein absolutely by the way i had a joke about shin fein i was giving a toast to my friend's wedding 20 years ago and i i said uh you know he's a money manager and when he first told me that i should get a roth ira i thought he was talking about the zionist wing of shin fein <laughs> You'd have, you'd have, uh, okay. Uh, all right. So where would you go with e When would you go with Ethan? Don't answer Ethan. When we asked your father, when would he like to go with you in a time machine? Maybe I would say maybe, um, when was it that the, the Knicks won the, the championship? 69? 72? Or who was that with the Bradley? Bradley? Willis Reed, yeah. DeBusher, Bradley. Is that 69? 69. When yeah. Willis Reed walked back on the court with the oh, yeah. injury. Yeah. I did, that at, at, I, I, I did that at Jewish summer camp, but everyone was like, yeah, we also have knee injuries. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't impress anybody. Everyone had on knee, knee pads. And so. Um, you know why it was called Red Holtzman? Wait, Red Holzer was the coach of the of the Knicks. Oh, okay, yeah. Communist. He was a. I'm uh, making that up. Oh, okay. just. Making, I hope it's '69. I like to. I like to. '72, but I could be wrong. Well, there was another. It's like the '73 Mets. It's the '69 Mets, 
and the 73 Mets, but who cares about the 70? 69 Mets was a miracle. Okay, uh, so where you would he would like to take you to go see? Uh, he is very good because he's got the right can- concept. But I was thinking of Los Angeles, the heyday of the Lakers. Oh, yeah. Well, what's his name? Uh, Jerry West. Yes, Jerry West. Yeah. Uh, I would if I could travel. If I could time travel, I would go back to yesterday because I bought a sandwich at a place and they got my order completely wrong. I know some might say that's a waste of time travel, but you know, it's really the principle. It's just it's annoying. You order it, you're right there, and they it's not like I it's not like it was some like off the menu. I it's even a sandwich with a name. Like you named it. You have but so. you know how I used to drive my mother and father crazy? Uh, when I was a young man, if I wanted to return something, I would say, it's not the principle, it's the money. Yeah. <laughs> and my parents don't do it. Why, 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 why do you have to, why do you have to ruin? I appreciate that. Yeah. By uh, the way, I want to tell you just one more tale from the trenches. Oh, um, it's, oh yeah. Time is up. Yes. Tale from the thespian trenches. Sunday, I did a quick audition for a small role in a new series. Sunday, I submitted it. Monday morning, I get the call from my agent. They're asking you to confirm your availability. I confirmed it. An hour later, they went with someone else. It's a brutal business, boys it's and girls. It's a brutal business. But when you get it, it's like yes. landing a big fish. Whither will you go? Yeah. Yes. To this day, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if somebody calls me to do stand up, then I don't have to ask. You feel like and you're it, winning a lottery. And they're paying my cab fare and they throw in a meal. It's as, it's as though I, it's like, I, I just have a sprint. If they call me and offer me, yeah. it's a sprint. They want me. Why, nice. why should anybody do that? Why would anybody do that? Yeah. Because they got to the bottom of the list. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> they asked everybody. Uh, I'll, I'll be, I'll see you guys in two hours. I'm flying up. Peace. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Oh, and also the movie is. See you. Ne- see you yesterday. See you yesterday. See you yesterday. Check it out. It's really great. Check it out. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye, thanks. Thank you. The Hirschenfelds, everybody.